In the previous video, I have discussed about the structure of the muscle and the thick filament and thin filament. To understand the contraction better, I would recommend you to watch that video first. So in this video, we are going to talk about how the muscle's contraction occurs. So the muscle contraction starts when a nerve impulse appears the muscle for the contraction. So when the nerve impulse appears in the axon terminal, the axon terminal releases acetylcholine and there is a structure in the myofibril surrounding the thick filament and thin filament and the structure is called the sarcoplasmic reticulum which contains or it stores calcium in it but it has a gate which does not allow the calcium to go out without permission and there is also a gate which uh, accepts the acetylcholine in the sarcoplasmic reticulum so this is the structure of the sarcoplasmic reticulum and the green gate is for the calcium release and this gate which accepts the acetylcholine this is a ligand gated channel which opens by ligands like acetylcholine and these calcium gates are voltage gated channels it opens when voltage changes and when the calcium comes out it goes by the t tubule when the acetylcholine connects to the ligand gated channel it opens and the positive sodium ion goes inside and changes the voltage of the channel and the voltage gated channel opens and calcium comes out and it travels through the t tubule and it reaches the thin filaments and thick filaments which are surrounded by this sarcoplasmic reticulum this is the thin and the thick filament there are receptors for the calcium on the thin filaments and they are troponin so these thin filaments having red troponin are accepting the calcium ions or binding with the calcium ions due to the binding of the calcium ions the tropomyosin which was covering the myosin binding site of the actin filaments are uncovered so now the myosin binding sites are open and the thin filament is ready to attach with the myosin head now this is the thick filament or the myosin which has a atp binding site where atp binds and forms adp and phosphate and stores some energy to it and at that time the myosin head goes up and attaches with the thin filament or the actin subunit when it attaches to the thin filament the phosphate goes out and it occurs in the both side of the myosin filament it is attached to the thin filament and the phosphate is going out after this attachment the next step is in the next step the adp attached to the myosin head also gets released the adp goes out of the myosin head and during this time the energy which was stored inside the myosin head gives a strike and it pushes the actin filament towards the midline and the myosin heads are bended like this at this time which is pulling the actin filaments towards each other and the actin filaments which are attached to the myosin heads are pushed towards each other and the gap between them decreases and the length of the sarcomere 
as well as decreases with this pull. This is the muscle contraction. This is the cause or the how muscle contraction happens. This is the contracted muscle situation. After this muscle contraction, one more ATP arrives to the myosin head. And when ATP attaches to the myosin head and forms ADP and phosphate, the attachment between the thick filament and thin filament loosens and they detach and the myosin head comes to the previous position with one ATP, ADP and phosphate and the actin filaments or the thin filament also goes to the previous position of it and the sarcomere length goes to the previous length and this is the relaxation process of the muscle. Now the muscle is relaxed again. This theory by which it is being described is called or is named the sliding filament theory as the actin filaments are sliding over the myosin filaments. So now let us understand the changes of the lengths of the sarcomeres and the others in this case. So these are the Z lines or the Z lines. The region between two Z line is called the sarcomere and the straight black lines are denoting thin filaments or the actin filaments and the red lines are denoting thick filaments or myosin filaments. This is the Z line which is made up of alpha actinin protein. This is the thin filament made up of actin and this is the thick filament made up of myosin. Another Z line and the, and the region where the myosin is present, this region is called the A band and the region where myosin is absent is the I band. And this region is called H zone where no thin filament is present. And from one Z line to other Z line, the region is sarcomere. At this position, the sarcomere is relaxed. When the contraction occurs, the length of the myosin remains the same, but the actin filaments clump, comes closer to each other and the length of the sarcomere decreases. So the I band vanish, but the A band remains the same as the myosin length is unchanged in the sarcomere and the sarcomere length also decreases in the case of contraction. You can see this is the A band which is still visible and the I band is not present and the sarcomere length has contracted or decreased in the contraction of the muscle. This is the M line or midline. And you can see the changes of the sarcomere in relaxed and contracted position. The link of the previous video where I have described the structure of the filaments uh, is in the description. And written form or the notes on molecular basis of sliding filament theory and description of sliding filament theory is in the description. Thank you.